Corn rootworm is a major problem in U.S. corn production, but how to manage it? Well, there's a number of different ways that you could be effective managing corn rootworm. Well, there are really only two if you want to plant corn. So yes, we can talk about crop rotation, but let's say you really want to plant corn and you're just dead set on, hey, I'm planting continuous corn, you got two choices, either insecticide or BT. Well, and it may not even be two choices, Brian, it may be one. Use all these options that we have available if you've got heavy pressure, and we've seen this time and time again, and it really starts with an understanding of how that BT works. For that BT trait to work that's in corn, the rootworm has to take a bite out of that corn root. And in trials that we've seen where there's heavy, heavy pressure, that isn't enough. You're still going to have issues with stock lodging. You're still going to have issues with yield loss if you've got super heavy pressure. So you may need insecticide as well. I want to go back and talk just for a minute about what is that BT. We get so many questions from non-farmers about just overall food safety and what's happening. Just understand that the BT is a protein. Okay, you think about, oh, I've got to eat meat so I get protein into my body, right? Well, this is just another protein. The difference with this BT protein is, well, humans and livestock can digest it just fine. Certain insects, like corn rootworm, cannot digest it. Well, very specific insects, and that's the thing too. It doesn't kill all bugs. It just kills very specific ones. And it was interesting, I was learning about how the corn borer BTs work, and they actually dissolve just fine in an acid-based digestive system like we have. But in an alkaline-based digestive system like certain bugs have, well, they turn to crystals and they can't dissolve them. And that's what's going on here. So you say, well, how is that protein safe for us? Guess what? We have an acid-based digestive system. So we're going to be just fine. We have no issue digesting that and actually utilizing its nutritive value. The big problem, though, with the BT trait is we're starting to see resistance. In fact, pretty widespread resistance to single BT traits. What we talk about with farmers who are really concerned about this is, hey, just have multiple BT traits. For example, smart stacks. Okay, you're gonna have two different rootworm traits. That's really going to help. At this point, we haven't seen any major issues with two traits all in the same thing, but nevertheless, if it was me after I've just had resistance with one, and, and believe me, we've had resistance right around here and right in our farm area. So because I'm worried about that, even with smart sex, I'm still at least gonna use some insecticide. The question is how much? Because a lot of people say, well, boy, I don't wanna spend 20 or $30 an acre on insecticide. You don't have to, especially when you've got smart stacks out there already. I'd probably only spend maybe three, $5, maybe eight at the the most. All right, and speaking about the insecticides, uh, they've kind of taken the same approach in, in that sector of our industry of having more than one mode of action. You see products like Aztec that have been out for a long time, but now there's Smart Choice and, and many others that are putting to use two different modes of action here to try to prevent any kind of resistance by the bugs. The other thing is we're looking for good killing power. So we're seeing farmers across the country increasing their rates on insecticides to try to get more activity out of them as they're going in the furrow or in a two by two or in a T-band or however they're applying that insecticide. The key here is going to be to get them in close proximity to the roots because that's what we need to protect. Now a T-band is nice in that you're going to spread some out on top of the ground and that's gonna work its way down through the soil to protect shallow roots. When you put it all in furrow, that product is really only gonna spread down and out. So it's not really going to protect roots above it. And we see a lot of those nodal roots being above it. So I do like the T-band, that's my preferred approach. Some insecticides will only be labeled for in furrow based on safety. So there's going to be a number of choices that you have to make if you wanna use an insecticide on your farm. All right, the last big thing is liquid versus dry. What should you use on your farm? The dries are better. Okay, they're usually five to 10% better in our experience, but the liquid's a lot less expensive. You can go with Capture LFR, for example, and even get the biological VGR for probably eight bucks an acre for the full rate. It's very inexpensive. So that's a real good option for you. And like I said, if I'm doing smart stacks already, I'm probably using a half rate. So it's not gonna cost very much money. The other nice thing about Capture LFR or VGR, you can put it right in with your liquid fertilizer. So you don't have to have a different delivery system or anything like that. Yeah, it would be nice not to have another system, but on the other hand, you could have something like smart boxes and then you never have to handle that pesticide. You just set the box on, you're done, 
no contact. Okay, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying, oh, all pesticides or insecticides are super safe. But when I look at the old stuff, we used to use counter and diphenate and thymate. They were way more dangerous than any of the things we're using today on the farm. Force, Aztec, Capture. These are relatively safe insecticides to human beings. So I'm a lot more excited about using an insecticide than I was 20 years ago. And why are we talking about corn rootworms? You're going to see it in the yield data that you see from plots across the country this year. Wow, there is an impact with corn rootworms on the non-rootworm traded hybrids because a lot of these plots, they don't put insecticide on, so you can start to see what the differences are. And smart stacks hybrids and, and hybrids where they did put insecticide on really stood out in performance. Having good corn rootworm control is important to yield, but so is weed control. We'll talk about our Weed of the Week coming up next.